really pleased to be here. And we uh, have today a panel to talk about a project that we felt fit very well into the discussion uh, that is at the heart of this summit. And there's a couple of reasons why we chose to go in this direction. One is that the project, we, we feel, speaks to the theme around recalculating culture in a digital world. The second is it really does talk about the perspective of public arts funders and, and what that digital world means in terms of engagement in particular. And then the third reason we chose it is that it really illustrates a partnership between a municipal level funder and a provincial funder. Um, and we thought that was a, a nice reflection of the collaboration that we were trying to achieve by being here with you. So with that, uh, we're going to talk about Invest YYC today, which is a project that Jeffrey and Karen uh, will both speak to um, as the partners that were involved with it. And what I think I'd like to do, just to, to kick it off, Invest YYC is a crowdfunding platform. Now, I'm pretty sure with the events in the national media recently, everybody in this room would know what crowd crowdfunding is. Yes? Yes. So we all know what crowdfunding is. So this is a provocative discussion for uh, a variety of reasons, including the, the, the events of, of uh, it happening in Toronto as we speak. Uh, the, the question I do want to ask, though, is how many in the audience have visited a crowdfunding site online? How many have actually poked around Kickstarter or something like it? OK, so fair number. Great. And how many of you have actually contributed to a project via a crowdfunding site? OK, great. OK, so we've got some active uh, donors through crowdfunding in the audience. So some of this, you'll bear with us a little bit as we sort of set the stage. The first thing I'm going to ask Karen to do is just talk a little bit about crowdfunding, um, just as a bit of a situation for the rest of the conversation we'll have with the panel. So I'll turn it over to you, Karen. Sure, thanks, Kelly. Um, so, in a, as a frame, I'm just going to talk about our year as the cultural capital of Canada, which we shared with Niagara, the city of Calgary shared with the Niagara region this year, to say that we started with this theme, which was creative, connected communities. And my approach to that theme, it, along with basically my entire work career, is that community engagement isn't something you do, it's a way of being. So. Right now, in, in I'm sure what many of you in your own municipalities are experiencing is that the, the limit of the resources through which we have to work is palpable, it's, it's in front of us, and even those of us that might be lucky enough to be seeing growth in resource base um, are seeing a need to lever those resources and to show very clearly to council and leadership how that money is being spent and, and how it may be being levered. And, um, and so if you think that community engagement is a way of being and you know that you have limited resources and you know that you need to lever, then crowdfunding in a way becomes the means that equals the end. So in other words, if one of the things that you're doing at the municipal level or at the provincial level is providing an investment, a funding investment, then how is the way in which you provide that investment engaging the community, taking the best use of limited resources, and leveraging those resources? So within the cultural capital program for Calgary, we, um, we did do Invest YYC as a legacy, and we'll talk about that for sure. But we also crowdsourced the bid. So just to give you an example, so normally a bid for a cultural capital would be written by a municipality. So in Calgary, it was crowdsourced 5,000 people participated in telling um, us, in this case, the implementers of that bid, what they wanted to see. Uh, we had a grassroots funding program that we um, chose the recipients for through crowd voting. And in the six months that we operated it, we had 27,000 votes and 70,000 unique site visits. So we engaged the community in helping us make an investment, which then engaged the community um, so it's really, for us, it was about creating a cultural capital year that created a new conversation space, that used the best of networks to create that conversation space. Active engagement. So I like to think about it as the difference between bringing people together to be engaged and creating a space for people to engage, which helps you, as a funder or in a municipality, know where you're going to go next much the same as this conference would be. So that gives you maybe some context of why we entered into crowdfunding as a cultural capital year. But um, 
some context about crowdfunding and why it's important to the arts in particular, I think, is important. So um, in 1983, uh, Lewis Hyde wrote a book called The Gift. I don't know if anyone's read this book, but it's an important book in my mind because it might have been one of the first real kind of dissections of um, the motivations for artistic creation in a monetary culture. So in a financial system, um, the desire to make art being a social exchange, not necessarily a monetary exchange. And in the work, he talks about, could the means to produce art also be a social exchange? So this is 1983. Maybe Hyde was talking about at the time something like patronage, where the means is a social exchange. Like anyone that's had any experience with fundraising would understand this, that donors are selfishly motivated to exchange with the cause that they're donating to. Um, certainly he could have been talking about public funding. The role of a public funder is a social exchange in this way. So in 1983, he might have been talking about patronage and public funding, but something changed between 1983 and now, obviously, and um, that's the access to social networks and the ease to create a community online. It changed the scope and the scale of social exchange forever. And I, I think that's unarguable. We've always been in the process of social exchange. Artists have always been motivated by that. But coming on into an online community really increases the scope and scale. So what happened in the crowdfunding trajectories in 2008, which when I say it even now, seems like yesterday. <laughs> Um, crowdfunding sort of started in 2006, but it really took hold in 2008 with the introduction of two new sites. So before uh, Indiegogo, which I think everyone knows now because of Gawker and Rob Ford, that's the site that's... Um, I, I won't ask if anyone gave to that campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a few of us. Um, and <laughs> I think I just outed myself. And um, Kickstarter which you may be familiar with, um, it's hitting the news. Zach Braff is raising money for a film project there, um, the Veronica Mars project, things like that. So these sites have only been around since 2008. Uh, most of the crowdfunding sites that are active right now are for cultural projects. I would argue that that's because of the social exchange. That's because there's so much to give in reciprocation for bringing people into the creative process, and people want that. And so this is a ground that's been really well kind of toiled for crowdfunding. And just to give you a sense of how important it is right now, Kickstarter, and I have some stats. Um, so it launched in 2008. Since that time, and these are, I, I apologize, 2011 figures. So $343 million has been pledged on the site. Um, 2.6 million people have backed projects and 29,000 projects successfully funded. And just to put that into context a little bit, um, in 2010, Kickstarter uh, funded more art projects with more money than the National Endowment for the Arts in the US. And um, Jeffrey sent me a stat, which maybe you're going to use, but I'm going to. You go ahead. I'm going to throw it out you there. You go ahead. Uh, <laughs> which is from The Economist, um, which says they're predicting that in 2013, in the year 2013, the total amount of investment through crowdfunding will be three billion, with a B, dollars. So here's an opportunity to have a social exchange that creates the means for creating art that creates a social exchange. So it's a virtuous cycle, and that's the sort of lens of crowdfunding that, that um, that I just wanted to share with you as a little start. Great, thanks Karen. Yeah. So clearly with that kind of an impact in terms of the amount of money that we're talking about and the types of projects that are being funded, this is something we need to be aware of and understand at the very least. But I want to ask the question of Jeffrey. From your perspective, Jeffrey, what is the role of the, the public arts funder in the crowdfunding space in that, that conversation? How do you see that? Well, Kelly, that's a, first that's a very good question because um, there, there can be lots of different views on that, but in, in, in our experience, um, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, Alberta's Arts Funding Agency, um, 
had an opportunity, I think, to look at essentially what was a, a grant application from Calgary 2012 to take a chance and invest in really, I mean, it's not new technology because it's been around since 2008, but new to Alberta, new to the city of Calgary. And the Alberta Foundation for the Arts Board, I think, um, was, was intrigued by this. So they did agree to receive a grant application on this matter. And um, uh, there was considerable uh, debate around that table about, boy, we don't really understand this. You know, what is this about? But at the, at the end of the day, uh, they, they were um, supportive. And I'm very happy that they were supportive because it really is. It's investing in the future. We had uh, a, a very uh, willing and, in, in our view, a very capable partner in Calgary 2012. The, um, one of the other things that uh, uh, Karen and Calgary 2012 brought to that approach to the Alberta Foundation for the Arts is they'd already established uh, some significant private sector investment for this uh, crowdsource portal. And it, it is, I know Karen will go through the, the portal a little bit for you, but I, I do want to just uh, note that it's both about crowdfunding and crowdsourcing volunteers. Um, so, um, those, those were two things that really resonated for, for us and combine that with uh, a significant investment from Alberta Treasury branches, uh, a network of really credit unions in Alberta. Um, there, it, that I think caused uh, uh, or triggered funds at the provincial level to let's see what they can do. What, it's an experiment. We know we're taking a bit of a chance here. How's it going to work out? And I think you'll see here in what uh, Karen takes us through that uh, there's some good results. Shall we take a look? Yes. Okay, let's, we'll do a bit of a walkthrough of the site so everyone can get a real sense of what it is we're talking about and maybe get at the, um, the interface between the sort of public arts funding process and the site as well in the tour. We can talk a little bit about how those yeah. things interface. That would okay, be I'd love to. Um, I will say to Jeffrey's point that Earlier when I said the means has to get to the same end, so we, we know that we're creating crowdfunding to lever our dollars in and build a community and build capacity. So we started by levering our dollars to create this platform. So I'll give you a sense. Um, the total budget for creating this platform is as a custom code base was uh, just over $400,000, which included $150,000 um, to match funding. So there's a few things unique about this. To answer, if anyone's thinking in their mind, why not just ask your community to go on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, um, I'll tell you why. This is geographically specific. So if you come to Invest YYC, you will see projects from Calgary in this case. So it's about giving where you live in your community, to steal a TELUS phrase. Um, but you know, it's important, and I think that that's the future of crowdfunding. We're seeing that with Kickstarter. We know there's Kickstarter New York, Kickstarter Seattle, because municipalities want to do things like incent people to give, lever their dollars. So in our case, you as donors, um, if anyone feels a particular fondness to Calgary and its culture and wants to come on and make a donation, if you made a cumulative donation of $100, and that could be $10 at a time, we would match you, the donor. So you get $100 in your donation account. They can go anywhere. So it's not attached to the project. It's about building a community of donors. The other thing that's different about this site than a site like um, Indiegogo or Kickstarter is that uh, these projects are all curated in that they're selected through a juried assessment process. So when you go on Invest YYC, in this case, you're seeing projects that we had 1,000 applications for a project grant program as part of our cultural capital year of celebration. Of course, we couldn't, we, we lacked the resources to fund 1,000 projects, but there were some <laughs> highly assessed projects we weren't able to fund. Those are the projects that you find here. So as a donor in the community, if you're interested in ensuring that the project is going to happen and it's going to have artistic impact and it's going to have public impact, those projects have been screened and then the projects that are here don't have to go through a separate application. We already do that. We're arts funders, so this is just a, a, and I would even argue that in many cases it's not a consolation prize. It's actually getting you farther ahead. Many of these projects are hitting their targets, and they're also, they also have the added benefit now of having a community of people 
that are vested into their creative process and really strengthening their social exchange and their trust relationship. Um, Jeffrey mentioned give time and money. And the, the third thing that's different about this than uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo is that if I gave money, I would get a tax receipt, a charitable tax receipt. So I could be funding an independent artist CD project and my donation would be receivable, which an independent artist cannot access any other way. We can do that because of our relationship with the municipality, with the city of Calgary. And if you want to know more about that, you can ask a question later. But I'll, I'll just say it's an incentive to a donor. So, um, you know, for Invest YYC, all the projects are separated. So you can go through and look at them by categories, in our case, um, culture, dance, film, new media, heritage, literary arts, multidisciplinary, music, theater, and visual arts. If you select any project, you go to the project page that looks the same for all projects. And we were able to transfer a considerable amount of the language from the grants over. So it's, it's an easy in for projects. You can see that this project um, is 55% to their funding goal. So they've raised just over 10000 almost $11,000 to their $20,000 goal. They don't have any volunteers to date. It's un unknown to me whether they're seeking volunteers. Um, you see benefits. So sometimes the benefits, they have to be uh, intangible and in that they can only be worth sort of 10% of the project cost because of charitable law. But they can be really cool. For instance, um, I donated to a visual art project. And then um, because I gave the artist $500, I actually get my face in the painting. <laughs> it's very. <laughs> I was told that would happen by the text upstairs. So apologies. <laughs> you know, you can, the trust relationship can be built that way. And, and that really strengthens how I feel about the artist, right? So I'm going to probably follow their career forever and take all my friends to the opening. So you can start to see <laughs> how that actually works. Um, each, so each applicant, it's the basic crowdfunding site. Each applicant sets their benefits. Um, on the left-hand side, or right-hand side to you, you can see who's funded it. And um, because these are public profiles, I could go in and I could look at everything that, in this case, Calgary 2012 has funded. Um, donors can make their funding amount public, or they can make their funding amount private. They can make themselves private, or they can make themselves public. You can see who else has funded things, other things you might like. So it's really about building a community of donors. And then if I wanted to actually make a donation to a certain project, of course, it's like fantastically easy. I can go in. I can say, yes, I want to donate now. And um, I get sort of, in this case, I get asked how much. Let's say I want to give 10 bucks to this project, which is the theory behind crowdfunding, is many people at small amounts. And, um, and then we process through. PayPal, so it would take me to a PayPal gateway, or it would ask me to pay by account or, in our case, gift card. Now, you can really see that as a funder or as a municipality, as you develop relationships with other organizations, maybe it's Christmas time and your business um, improvement district wants to give gift cards for Christmas, or that's probably not a good example because they give them to their vendors, but you know, another, another organization or maybe the city themselves, then you can give gift cards that allow people to come on here and do their thing, which has been really successful in Calgary as well. So those are all the ways to pay, and I would fill one of those out, hit return, and voila, I get an instant email to my email address, which would say thank you for your donation, and a donation receipt, which I could use come tax time, and I'd be off to the races. So the only thing I can't do here is add a project. I can add a project because I'm logged in as Karen Ball, so I have this sort of meta login. But if I was coming to this site as a, as a community member, it would ask me for a code. And because we're curating, then you have to get that code from, in this case, the grantor, who is now Calgary Arts Development. So that's the site. Is there anything I'm not showing, Jeffrey, that you No, think I, I, think that, I think that um, is, is a good overview. But just to pick up on your um, 
curation comment and the fact that there is, you do have to get that code before you can put your project on the site. That's another thing that was of particular interest to, to the Alberta Foundation for the Arts because like many other public arts funders, we have many, many more eligible applications than we have funds available to support. So we, in the case of individual artists in Alberta, we have two grant deadlines a year in all disciplines. And we are, we likely fund between one in 10 or three in 10 uh, eligible applicants uh, based on the resources available. Uh, there are always, the, uh, the um, assessment panels always though do leave us with a list that says if by some miracle there are funds available, these three or 10 or six other artists and their projects are certainly worthy of being funded. So we took those projects um, by region by, and, and screened them by, the, by Calgary and area, and I can't remember how far around Calgary we went, but uh, it wasn't just the, um, Calgary in particular. I think we included Airdrie and Canmore, maybe um, Cochrane, a few, few regions around Calgary. And then we communicated with those applicants to us and said, um, when they got their letter, yes, highly recommended by um, the jury. Uh, unfortunately, no funds available. However, um, if you are interested, um, this opportunity, this crowdfunding opportunity exists at Invest YYC. And then they would then uh, reach out to um, Invest YYC and um, uh, take take us or take them up on their offer or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would populate a page for them with their grant application and they'd go in and edit it. So it's super easy. And um, I should mention that, so this site launched in November of 2012 and cash in, not counting gift cards and I'm not counting what we put in as matching incentive, um, has been $170,000. So the projects on here, independent artists and arts organization and culture and heritage organizations have raised $170,000 cash. In order for the organization to receive their donations, they have to hit 20% of their goal. So did every organization hit 20% of their goal? No, and so far we've seen some organizations whose campaigns have ended that haven't. What happens to the money is it goes back to the donor as a credit that they then give back on Invest YYC. But I would say that 80% or greater of the campaigns have hit their goal, and probably about 10% of them have by far exceeded their goal where they're raising 200 or 300% of what they had intended, which is also common universally in crowdfunding because it's about the social exchange and everybody, if it's an attractive project, people want to be part of it. So on, on that question around the impact that Invest YYC has had, that's sort of the, that's the cash side of it. What about um, the response from the artists and arts organizations that have been using the site, both those who have been on Invest YYC and those who haven't had that same opportunity? What's, what's the dialogue in the, in the arts community around it so far? Um, well, I think that because it's, uh, it's not one more application that we have to go through, the, the they can see immediately what it would look like to live and breathe on a crowdfunding site, that, that it's been good. And what we've also found um, in just practical experiences, we built this with the AFA and ATB so that we could all learn together in Calgary Arts Development. So we're learning a lot about what you do and don't do on crowdfunding. Um, but what we're really finding is the more you build the community, the better it works. And I think people know that going in, but it's as simple as, you know, using these share this project buttons here to post to Facebook, Twitter, or pin to Pinterest this project. And it's not just on the artist and arts organization side, but it's actually really encouraging people that already champion culture that want to make donations to share that, to lead that, to use all of our communication mechanisms to tell their stories, to promote them as champions of culture so that they lead by example and bring a bigger community in. And the ultimate win for a site like this, I think, in a, in a municipal context is that people go to it not knowing what they're going to invest in, but they know that they're having a portfolio of cultural investments on Invest YYC, and their friends know it, and their friends are active in this area, 
and that community is just as vibrant as it would be on opening night at the theater. And that this is just a, an online community of people that have decided to invest $10 a month or $200 a month, and they come back and they continually support culture where they live. So that takes some time and some work, and I think what we're learning is that the artists and the arts organizations will be more adoptive of the technology the more the funder or the operator, in our case, could be in raising the community around it. So when we match donors, that's a huge incentive for people to, to ask their community to go on and donate. So it, it really is, it's also an exchange relationship between us, the operator of the site and the artists that are on it. And the, the better job the operator of the site will do, which actually now is Calgary Arts Development, I think the more inclined artists and cultural community will be. Some people want to be there immediately because their project completely suits crowdfunding. But it's not going to work if you're trying to you know, go to a conference in Berlin. It, well, it might work if you're trying to go to a conference in Berlin. It depends who you are. But some projects are better suited. Can you go a little deeper into that question? Some projects are better suited because this is one of the criticisms we often hear in the crowdfunding debate is that it, <laughs> certain types of projects are going to have broader popular or public appeal and rise above in terms of what they attract. Is mm -hmm. there, what, what have you learned around the kinds of projects that are better suited through this experience? It's one of two things, I think, is what we've learned. Um, one would be the artist knows a lot of people <laughs> and they love that artist. So if you were trying to go to a conference in Berlin and you were um, someone that was very active and had a really robust kind of community around you, whether that's realized online or in person, and you put it out there, you're going to get lots of donations. So that's one thing. And that's the same for organizations. People that have built really great trust relationships with their audience, that have loyal followings. So I like to think of it as kind of a test. If the organization could say to the community, we want to produce a play. We don't really know what it is. We don't really know when it's going to be on stage. But if you buy your ticket now, <laughs> then we'll make sure you get there when we put it on the stage. If they could say that, and they could feel confident that they'd probably be able to sell 80% of their house, 60% of their house, it's just, then they're a perfect candidate for the crowdfunding system because that's essentially what you're asking for. And you can do that very reciprocally. You can say, we're going to produce a CD. If you buy it now, we can go into the studio and make it, you know, essentially. Um, and then the other side is projects that are just very compelling to anyone. So we had um, a, a, an, illustrative, an illustrator that wanted to illustrate scenes of Calgary. So she said, well, if you give me $100, I'll illustrate a scene of your choosing. And if you give me $500, I'll produce it into Christmas cards for you. <laughs> so it's November. So people were going crazy. They're like, I want you to do my house, or I love this park. And you know, it's good for her, because that's how she wanted to work. And so she was able to hit her goal like that. And not just that, but it's a whole audience of people that didn't know this artist at all beforehand, in, including the mayor and a bunch of other people that were you know, kind of got involved in it. So that kind of project or that kind of person, I think it's, it's both of those things that do well. And Jeffrey, how about from your perspective in terms of lessons learned from the experience around Invest YYC and, and what might be next for the platform? Well, it, the, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts is still keenly interested and, and has, it was very happy to see the positive results and certainly the, just the, 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 ca the cash invested is, is, speaks for itself, I think. And it, also the notion that these are all projects that otherwise wouldn't have been able to proceed uh, mm -hmm. either through support from Calgary 2012 or Calgary Arts Development or the Alberta Foundation for the Arts in, in these cases. So that's a very good thing. Uh, our, I, I think it's safe to say that our view is this, this is an, an additional tool in the arts funding ecosystem. There's a, there's, there's a place for it. Uh, we, we see this uh, has, has been, if you've been watching this as Karen went through the, the history, you know, it's, it's, it's coming. Uh, we're very excited to be kind of in on the, I'll call it the ground floor, at least in, in, in an Alberta experiment. Um, if you have been, have been 
listening to parallel stories about uh, crowdfunding, you know that various securities commissions are looking at rules and regulations around crowdsourcing startups in, in the corporate world. And uh, I'm happy that we're quite a bit ahead of that and have some flexibility to um, be able to participate and, and play in this, in this sandbox, really. Um, so we have, uh, we, we have, I think, in terms of in front of the Alberta Foundation for the Arts right now, we've seen some success. Uh, we need to get our heads around uh, really a provincial strategy. And this is, you know, how, how to set the table for other municipalities in Alberta, in this case, to participate in this. One of the things the Alberta Foundation for the Arts received, I think Karen mentioned it, um, for the grant that we provided is that we uh, have a license to the code. Um, the code, uh, also uh, uh, just to underline something Karen mentioned, is that uh, this tool can be geolocated, or uh, I think that's the right expression, it can be filtered by any geographic region in Alberta. So we can choose we could divide it into pre-existing tourism regions or you know, have Edmonton, Calgary, something in the central, north, south, however. It could be the whole province. There's a lot of different ways to slice this. And we, we have to get our heads around that now. So uh, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts Board has asked that we come back uh, very soon with a, a strategic approach to um, further leveraging this kind of activity in Alberta. So I am in um, informal conversations with uh, other municipalities to um, you know, get this on their radar. I know Karen has had some conversations uh, with her network within the province. Uh, and I also know that this is um, because I also have a part, part of my uh, day job exists through uh, the Provincial Department of Alberta Culture. I know that there's considerable interest from our current Minister of Culture in what, how could this tool benefit the broader cultural sector? So we've got some uh, pretty keen interest, uh, both from our funding agency and, and from the sponsoring department to come up with a plan, an approach, and how to make this available and under what conditions. And uh, part, of, part of the legacy of this is we even, we asked for, uh, the, the view you're seeing here is Invest YYC, but we've asked for, uh, uh, to have develop, you know, uh, just just for an example, like an Invest Alberta skin or something like that, so we could actually show uh, that this what it would look like uh, if it wasn't Calgary focused. I want to protect some time for questions. So before we go to the floor, any final thoughts from either of you? Things you want to just put out there before we maybe I'll ask just, It's good to follow that to say that um, so. We did offer the code to all of our original investors, um, but it's a lifetime irrevocable license access to the code at this point in time. The developer of this tool is um, a local programmer called Joy Media, J-O-I, and now that we've invested the hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the code where it is, um, we are happy to allow them to proceed to license the code to whomever may be interested in working in this world. So if crowdfunding is something that you're thinking might be part of your toolkit, then now you have a new white label solution um, brought to you by Joy Media with thanks from the Alberta Foundation for the Arts and our cult cultural capital partners, you can license. And so it's there and, and I'll just leave you with that if you want. Yeah, I, for me, Kelly, um, we we weren't really sure what we were getting into when when we started. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with where we are today and the fact that there are some positive results. That there is interest in the certainly in the Calgary and area uh, community in terms of making personal and small investments in what are really excellent projects. Um, and to see, uh, I mean, Karen can pull statistics uh, from, you know, to find, you know, where these donors are, are, are living and, you know, but, but people are looking at this not just from right in Calgary, they're, they're from, you know, across Alberta and I think even a few outside of the province as well. So um, uh, it's, and, and our board uh, really sees this as being something to get in on the ground floor, to be able to support it and strategize around it and make it available 
for a tool to add to the arts funding um, tools that are out there now.